All right, I want to show you in this uh, video how to buy, sell, and flip broken MacBook laptops. Um, this could be for you know any year, any version, um, or it could actually even be for used laptops as well uh, for MacBooks. Um, first thing you want to know, first thing you want to do is, is when you're buying a, a MacBook, you want to make sure you have something with uh, internal webcam. Um, which of course it will be on the top of your screen. If it does not have a webcam, I would stay away from it just because it's going to be 2005 um, or earlier because they didn't start putting webcams into MacBooks until 2006. And this is the A is an Apple 1181 model. Um, they made this particular MacBook, it's a white MacBook. They made this model from 2006 till 2009 um, and then they started going with the gray laptop MacBooks which is called a MacBook Pro usually um, and the MacBook Pros are made out of aluminum sheet metal which makes them more expensive and more uh, highly sought after um, so you know to start out with the MacBooks uh, of the early version from the 2000 and 6, 2007, 2008 versions. They're using a um, an older processor. They're using the, either the Intel Core processor, which can be like around 1.8 gigahertz to 2 gigahertz, or you know up to you know 2 to 2.2 gigahertz, depending on the year. Um, and they use an older kind of memory, which is called the um, the DDR2 memory. And you'll notice that the um, the little the little uh, notch here where you insert it into your uh, MacBook will be on the far left as opposed to the newer ones called the DDR3 they're a little bit further over on the left side closer to the middle the little notch there so unfortunately with the older ones and the older RAM they're, they're not as fast and you can't upgrade them to eight gigs. You know they'll only go up to from you know one to four gigs on the uh, 2006 to 2008 versions. Um, and you're going to be paying a lot less for them if they're broken or even if they're used. This again is the white MacBook from 2006 to 2008, and you'll, you'll usually be able to pull the processor from under the battery. And what you do is you get you a large flathead screwdriver and you just turn that little notch there and they're going to have the usually have the serial number underneath the battery the hard drive is right here and then, then you undo these screws here in the middle and your memory would be right there there's going to be two of them and again I would highly recommend against paying too much for these if they're broken and someone tells you that they got one you really only want to want to pay from anywhere from twenty to fifty bucks for it. Um, if it's working, you may be able, should you make them pay up to seventy, depending on how good the condition is. The older MacBooks will tend to crack on the palm rest just by design. They'll crack right here on the far right, just due to people keeping their weight on there, uh, which highly diminishes the value because when people see that crack they're not going to want to buy it uh, as much. You'd either have to replace the palm rest um, or sell it very cheaply. So again, these use the old memory and they're not sought after as much of course because they're you know going on a decade years old. Here is a MacBook Pro but this one's an older one and this one is a Asian Apple 1211. This is from a 2006 One clear way to know at the beginning if they have an old MacBook, you can ask the seller, you know, first of all, make sure it's got a webcam on it. But secondly, you want to make sure if the battery is accessible from the back, you know, you could have them send pictures. Then you know it's an older version from 2006 to 2008 to 2009. And so a MacBook like this, a Pro, if it's broken, and the screen doesn't seem broken you know I may pay up to up to 40 for this but most likely not I would probably only pay like 20 or 30 for it because again they just don't have a good resale value and again the white one is 
the battery is exposable from the back. That's how you know it's an older version. The newer ones do not, uh, the, you have to actually undo the back in order to get access to the battery. Now you want to go up to the later models, well, let's say later, 2008, 2009, 2010. Um, you're going to want to, uh, this would be a 2009 to 2011 white MacBook. And these are a lot nicer than those other ones because they use the DDR3 memory. So you can go up on speed and they got usually better processors and they will take a, a higher operating system. Uh, that's another video from another time. You know, the older ones, you really want at least a Snow Leopard if you're going to put it on 2006. Uh, these will take up to a, uh, an OS, um, even a Maverick OS 10. Um, and they're just nicer quality. They have rubber backs, so that's another way you can tell it's a 2009 to 2011. Again, we're talking about the white MacBook. And they got a total of eight screws. And then, uh, of course, the hard drive is accessible on the bottom. And we can go ahead and do this real quick. I can tell you what a 2000, this is a 2009 to be specific. Unfortunately, with these older white, or these white MacBooks from 2009-2011, these rubber mats here do go bad. But don't let that discourage you. If someone's got one for sale and this is really ragged out and it's pitch black and ugly um, and then this this rubber mat will start falling apart do not let that discourage you because the seller won't think it's worth as much but you can replace this you can buy one for as low as 10 bucks to replace it and again almost all of them start looking rough or you can take it to the macbook store and they will replace it for free with a brand new one because they got a, a a policy on there that this was defective all right so in the white MacBooks the newer ones you see here you got the DDR 3 memory that's your hard drive uh, this one I think is a 320 gig it's your DVD your battery and your um, and your uh, fan and if you want to pay for these if they're broken and the screen's still intact and it looks pretty good condition I would even this is 2016 right now I would even venture say you could pay up to 80 to 100 bucks for one of these broken if they're used I'd pay up to 150 on it and then you could flip it for a lot more so those are the 2010s on the white now the 2009 to 2012 MacBook Pros you'll see here it'll actually say MacBook Pro down here now there are a few aluminum out there from 2008 2009 that are aluminum that are still they're called unibody and they literally look almost identical to the Pro it doesn't say Pro but it'll just say MacBook over here and not Pro Those are actually a little bit more sought after than the white ones, even you know the newer white ones from 2010. So, um, you know, I would I would grab those if you can. This particular MacBook Pro I picked up online uh, locally, and I got this one for I got this one for about 80 bucks. And the reason that they wanted to sell it is because you can see here the crack is right down through here, and um, I can plug this up real quick. As you can see there, there's a crack right here. But it didn't actually go into the LCD, which is a good thing because this is just a protector of the LCD. So you can buy one of these on eBay for like 10 to 20 bucks. It's the same thing as this. You take a, a warm hair dryer, go around there, and you, and you chip away at this plastic and this will adhesive on there and look brand new. 
So for a MacBook Pro that I paid $80 for, um, it worked perfect. And actually, it wouldn't turn on when I received it because the RAM was bad. When I switched out the memory, the RAM, um, it, it turned on just fine. So, you know, when I replace this and then uh, change out the, um, the battery and put the original operating system on the hard drive, this thing could sell up to 300 bucks. Even though it's a six-year-old MacBook Pro, it still will have a higher value than, let's say, a Dell or a Toshiba or a, uh, another, um, another uh, a PC computer. Now, with the MacBook Pro, if you turn this around, this one's got 10 screws. You see it's almost identical to the white one that we had. And to be honest with you, the only really difference is this one's made out of plastic and this one's made out of aluminum. And to be honest with you, you know, for the money, the white one's almost as good as the Pro. Um, the Pro looks nicer because it's aluminum, but as far as the processor and everything and the memory speed, you got good performance. The Pro might be a gigahertz or two faster, but not a big deal. And of course, they're using the new DDR3 memory. Um, I replaced the hard drive. But you can see here, this is what a hard drive, this is a SATA hard drive. Not to be mistaken with an SSD solid state, which is faster. And um, installed the uh, operating system on it and it works great. So that's the MacBook Pro. Um, when you're comparing prices and processors and everything like that, one thing to remember when it comes to the value of the MacBook, the the four things that matter the most is the year. You know, of course, the newer year um, is going to be worth more. Second would be the um, second would be the uh, the processor, the chip that's in it. Um, like I said, the older versions are like an Intel Core, 2006, and then they go to Intel Core 2. That's up to 2008, 2009, 2010. And then when it starts getting into 2011, you start to go to the i5 processor, which is a lot more sought after, and it boosts the value of your computer up a lot more. And then it, then it goes up to i7 processor, which is phenomenal. Okay, so your processor is one thing that puts the value on it the year. Third one would be the screen size. The majority of MacBooks are 13 inches, 13.3 inches. And to, me to measure screen size, you go from one corner to the opposite corner, so 13.3 inches. Um, a lot of people want the larger screens, the 15.4 inches, and so those will go for a little bit more. And so then you go uh, from screen size, year, um, the processor, and then um, what's inside of them, whether that be a RAM, uh, or rather how much RAM you have, you know, if it's from, uh, you might have two to four to um, eight gigs, and the newer ones could go up to 12 to 16 gigs RAM, and then your hard drive size, you know, you can go anywhere from 80 gig hard drive, 80 gig hard drive up to a terabyte. Um, you know, I would really look for 500 gig for the older, oldest models, but that is not a, um, a bad thing if you have a smaller hard drive or less RAM because that is one thing can be upgraded. Look at the individual parts. You know, the sum of the parts are worth sometimes more than the laptop itself, especially with the newer versions. So when you're buying a laptop, a MacBook especially, you got several things of value. Um, you got the screen itself. And so what you're doing is when you buy one, you start you start adding up the individual parts. So if you can't fix it or whatever, you know the, it's worth money. You look at the, the screen. If the screen is good, you look at the lid, the quality of the lid. Um, something like this, a lid assembly with a screen on it, 
can go up to as much as 100 120 even for a 2010 MacBook. And of course, as you get the newer models, they go up even higher. If they got Retina display, then watch out. I mean, you know, 2014 Retina display, and if it's in good condition, can go up to 3 350. Uh, you look at your palm rest, your keyboard. This right here can go up to 100 bucks. Depending on the year, and you turn it over, the um, lid can go up to ten to even as high as thirty bucks, depending on the model. Your battery, if the battery's working, depending on the cycles, um, the battery can be worth up to twenty twenty five bucks. Hard drive can be worth anywhere from. 10 bucks to 50 bucks depending on the speed and the the amount of storage space in it the DVD is worth money it can be worth up to 20 25 bucks the RAM if you get the newer DDR3 RAM uh, these can go from anywhere if they're a 4 gig chip which is this what this one is a four gig chip can go anywhere from uh, 25 bucks to 50 depending on the speed they even have eight gig chips in the DDR3 these believe it or not the two gigs can go up to 15 bucks because of course the two is more sought after than the one in the uh, the DDR2 models um, the power cord you know, if you check out the power cord and you ask the uh, the seller about the power cord, ask them if it has it in there. If it does, a good, genuine, good quality power cord can go up to size 30, 40 bucks. Resale value. So you add all these up in your head and then you see if it's a good deal. If you break even, if that gives you an education, it's worth it. As you can see here, there's a brand new power adapter. But if you notice, it does not have an Apple logo on it. If it does not have an Apple logo, it's a generic, uh, compu uh, it's a generic charger, with and it's less worth less than something that's genuine. But there still is value in it. A genuine, of course, is going to have the Apple. And you want to check the cords and see if there's any kinks or any any breakages on it. This particular one, as you can see, does. This has been stripped. It still works, but you really can't resell it that way. And if you do, you have to disclose that. Uh, so you add up the sum of all the different parts. And let's say that someone's got a MacBook and they're selling it and it's broken for 150. If you add up all the parts, you might have something that's worth 250. Now. To part out all that stuff and resell it is time consuming and, and so it might be something where you want to make sure you get enough good profit to where you can just sell it as is online and uh, still maybe turn 50 bucks to 70 bucks, maybe even a lot more depending on the year. Alright, so those are the pros and again the pro goes up to this year of course and they started making retina display and you can look online just to see how it's a retina, but a retina display goes up a lot more value and they started making the retina in 2013. And so some are retina, some are not in 2013. And um, those right there are um, really worth a lot even in broken condition. I've had one where it was really put through the ringer. I bought it for like 30 bucks online, or yeah, well, locally online. And uh, I mean, the metal was just all beat up, but it was like a 2014 or 2015. This was like a year ago. Um, and I was able to resell it back online for like 300. And we're talking about rough condition. I mean, it looked like it was ran over. Um, but it was able, I tested it, it was able to be, you know, it was able to be turned on. So that um, put up the value a lot. Um, as far as power cords, um, you know, the power cords are either, uh, you know, you can get them in 45 watt, which they're smaller, you can get them in 65 watt, 85 watt, and 
usually the bigger screens and the retina display is going to require the 85 watt. The uh, most of them is going to require 65 watt, which would be the um, which would be the regular MacBook Pros or the regular white ones. You can use them interchangeably. You can use a white one on a Pro as long as it's 65 watt and 13 inches. The newer ones are called MagSafe, and they have like a real a thicker look to it. And those started coming out, I think, in 2013. This is a MagSafe, regular MagSafe, and then that's a MagSafe 2. This goes on all the newer MacBooks, 2012 to or 2013 to, to now. You can put, you can use an old charger on a new computer. They just have converters for them. These are MacBook Airs, and I bought, bought both of these MacBook Airs online. One, the webcam just wasn't working. And I think that one has a hardware issue. And then the other one has a problem with um, not turning on at all. The one that does not turn on, um, I got for 220 It's a 2014 13-inch MacBook Air and bought it locally. And that one, um, fortunately, I was able to determine it was an 8 gig of RAM, which is really good for a MacBook Air. So, as you can see here, this is the one I bought for, um, this is the one I bought for 220, the 2014, missing the SSD drive, which goes right here. All the MacBook Airs and then even the uh, newer Pros have SSDs, and they do not come with SATAs any longer, just for quicker startup and faster speed. I was able to determine that this one did have water damage and if it's got a little red indicator this shows that it does have water damage and I could actually see corrosion on here. If you see any visible corrosion on a MacBook, when you get it home you could actually go over it and see if you can get the corrosion off. I was able to use denatured alcohol and a toothbrush and then dry it and see if you can get it to work again. If you do get it to work again that means you can resalt for a lot more just because you can um, you know document that it did turn on you can grab the specs which is what I did with this one um, but you do have to disclose that it does have water damage um, but again it'll be people will be willing to pay more for it if they see that you actually turn it on and they were able to see the screen works um, and the processor actually did turn on and then you can test the battery the keyboard and everything um, so that is a very good a very good thing so for this particular one I, um, I bought for 220 I should be able to get up to 400 bucks maybe even a little bit more for this one so you know that's a nice that's a nice little profit um, you know flipping one that I don't and, and we're talking about broken now I want to sell it as a broken computer and disclose that it has water damage but I'm still going to be able to make pretty good money uh, on this one. This particular one, this is another MacBook Air. B these are both uh, these are both 12 inch or I'm sorry, 13 inches. And the 13 inches are of course a lot more sought after. Um, and this particular one, I actually was able to grab for like 280. And so for 280, um, I should be able to to resell this one as is with the camera being broken for. I get bet you I'd be able to sell this one for up to 350 to to um, 400. You're going out on the field and you're buying um, MacBooks locally. I'd highly recommend that you. Be, meet them in a public place. Um, I, I would not meet them uh, definitely at, not at your place and um, and I definitely would try to meet them like in a local place where it's highly you know it's there's a lot of people around. Um, you can meet like inside your own bank 
inside the bank is a good place to to show or to, to buy a MacBook front at or to even resell. Um, inside of a restaurant is a good idea. If the MacBook is working, if you're showing the MacBook or you're buying a MacBook that is used and not broken, um, it's good to go to a, a you know a fast food restaurants or a Starbucks that has Wi-Fi. That way they can test it or vice versa you can test it. Um, and then you just have less chances of there being crime if you um, if you do do that. Um, I would recommend if you're if you I would definitely recommend you bring in like a, a, a screwdriver with you and just go ahead and keep one in your car at all times. Um, I would have one for a MacBook Air. The MacBook Air does use the torque, uh, the torque screwdriver, but you can get that at any like Home Depot. A Phillip, a small Phillips head screwdriver. Two MacBook chargers. You can use these interchangeably with MacBook Pros and the white ones. Um, you could even test out the 15 inch screen with a 65 watt. If you're just testing it to see it turns on, it's not going to hurt it. Um, so you can do that. Um, that way if they say it turns on or whatever uh, and the hard drive is just bad, then you know, you're know you still going to be able to, to test that out and just to make double sure. Then you need to get like a little power adapter uh, converter for your cigarette lighter in your car. When you buy it locally, you definitely want to make you check. You definitely want to check it out. Make sure there's no dings. Uh, make sure there's no uh, any cracks in the screen. And um, you know, it depends how good of a deal. If you're getting a real good deal, you don't necessarily have to open up the case to look at the logic board, uh, especially if it turns on. But um, you know, it depends what kind of price that you're paying for it. Um, again, you're going to learn this from trial and error, and it's going to speed up the process the more you know what you're buying. And you could literally, within, you know, buying a, a dozen MacBooks, you'll be able to take a look at it almost immediately, and and you could add up the money to see if you can make a profit or not, um, and how good of a profit that you can make. And when you're looking to, to buy broken laptops, um, or even use laptops online. Uh, several places you can look. You could actually put a small ad in the uh, the local newspaper stating that you buy broken MacBooks. Um, you can put ads on Craigslist. I'd recommend every other day putting an ad on Craigslist saying that you buy broken MacBooks. Um, and just leave the ad real short, you know, and just leave your um, phone number. You'll find the majority of people do text. They won't call. They'll usually text, which is fine. That saves you time. You want to make sure you leave your phone number in the ad and how to get in contact with you. And um, you really want to be brief and short. You want to tell them, you know, to let let you know what model it is, what's wrong with it, and how much they want. Um, and preferably, if you can get them to name the price, that's preferable. They're going to want you to name the price. But if you do that, then you can't go down. You can only go up. So um, what I do is I usually tell them, I'm like, well, it's your computer. You know what you paid for it. You know what you want. Just tell me what you want. And they might come back to you and say, what do you want to give me for it? Just say, well, just you know, let me know what you want. And um, that's the way I usually do it. And then they'll, they could either give you a crazy number that's way too high, or they can give you a, a, a great uh, number, which you can you know buy from there um, if eventually they just don't do it then just throw them out a number that you feel safe about when you do have a, a seller if it's one of the newer Macs I wouldn't really bother with this if it's an older Mac um, but if it's one of the newer ones from you know now to even 2012 2011 uh, 2011 and up I would say you know um, can you give me the serial number that way I can run it and just use that just use that phrase I, I'm just going to run it real quick now when you say run it they don't know what you mean they don't know if you have access to you know a police officer or, or what have you or if you have whatever technology but um, to, to get that information but that's basically conveying to them that you don't want to buy a stolen MacBook uh, you don't want to buy a stolen laptop. 
And if it is stolen, then that'll scare them away, which is what you want to do. You do not want to buy uh, stolen stuff um, for several reasons. Number one, it's the wrong thing to do. Uh, number two, it's illegal to buy stuff that's stolen, you know, possession of stolen property. Um, you know, I understand mistakes happen and you could accidentally buy something that's stolen. Don't worry about that if that's not your intention. And then um, number three, you just don't want to deal with that kind of people because, you know, they might be doing drugs or whatever. You just don't want that kind of people in your life. And then guess what? They're going to steal something else and they're going to bring that back. They're going to bring that to you. So, and then of course, if you have it and it comes out stolen, then you're out of laptop. You know, you can't get your money back for it. So they stole from you. What you're going to do if it's a newer MacBook, try to try to get them to get a serial number. And usually you can get the serial number on the bottom. It's a 12 digit and 12 number in, in a row. It'll say serial number and you can pull it off of the bottom lid. A lot of times the lids will be worn off to where you cannot find it on the lid. Um, if that's the case, there's a good possibility that they will not know how to get it. Um, you can get it off of the, uh, the logic board. But uh, if that's the case, just say, well, I'll run it when, um, when I meet you. Okay, and that should be enough to scare them away if they're trying to sell you, sell you something that's stolen. When I meet people in public, a lot of times I'll, what I do is on my door handle, I actually have a pepper spray. Um, and that's just for safety. I've never, out of all the transactions I've had locally, and I live in a fairly large city, um, I may have had three bad experiences in my life. And the three bad experiences is just from people giving me counterfeit money. And it was usually at nighttime, and usually the person didn't want to talk on the phone. And and then I just didn't get a good feel about it. So you want to try to meet people during the day if possible. And then also you want to try to talk to them at least once on the phone. People love texting, but you want to really get uh, the sound of their voice. And the reason that is is because people set off a, a form of energy when they're talking. And I'm not saying that you could always tell that, but um, it's good just to hear their voice. And it's to be honest with you, it's good that they hear your voice. You know, if you're an upbeat and nice person or whatever, um, you know, you could help sell your, yourself if you're if you're trying to sell something. And then also too, if you're trying to buy something, it puts them at ease. So I always try to at least talk to them on the phone at least once. And then you know, with the with the counterfeit money, you can um, you know you can carry a little counterfeit pen with you to test it. And you're selling if you're selling enough. Uh, things online, um, you'll get a feel of what the money looks like. You know, they got the magnetic strip down the the left side. And they got you know the the numbers raised. You know, if you look at through the light, you can see if there's an Abraham Lincoln or a Benjamin Franklin supposed to be on the right side. But you start to get good with knowing you know what's counterfeit or not. And then also carry like a little receipt book, which I'll show you right here. You're going to need that just for tax reasons when you do your 1099 um, for taxes. And so that's going to show what you paid for the item um, as far as a, a, as a you know proof for cost of goods sold. And what you're going to put on that receipt is you're going to put, of course, what you paid for it. You're going to put um, the seller's phone number, the location, and like I said, the serial number for the, uh, for the MacBook itself and then um, that's all you need and then what you want to do from there is um, whenever you sell something online whether that's recorded through PayPal because PayPal does give a 1099 um, if you meet two criteria and um, if you meet that criteria they're going to send you a, a 1099 and um, you know if you if you sold a, a, a computer online for 300 you need to show proof what you you paid for so uh, definitely keep a, keep good paper records from what you know what you do pay for the item and don't be worried about you know asking for someone to fill out a receipt you know usually the person uh, you know they may, may have been given the computer for a gift like three years ago and they broke it and they threw it in the closet and they thought it was worthless 
until they saw your ad and they're getting 100 bucks or 200 bucks or whatever for it and they're just tickled to get it and they're happy to sign any receipt that you give them um, don't be worried about or afraid to go down on price once you meet them in public um, if what they say is everything that they claim to be and it's everything is there there's no additional wear on the item that they didn't mention um, I'm more than happy than give to give them what they asked for I don't play with people I don't I don't bait and switch and get them to meet me and then all of a sudden go down I don't believe in that kind of business um, however if there is something on the item let's say that the uh, the MacBook has dings on it that they did not show in a photo or did not mention or if you test the power adapter and they say it turns on and it doesn't turn on um, or if they say it's got four gigs of RAM and it has zero RAM or zero hard drive um, then feel free to say hey look it's not what you say it was I'm gonna to have to um, give you less money and this is what I'm gonna give you for it you know usually people don't have a problem with that most of the stuff that you'll 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 learn It'll, you'll learn it within like 10 transactions like the back of your hand and so the key is to try to um, the key is to try to break even at first uh, of course you want to make a little bit of money but as you get better and better at it you're going to be able to spot better deals you're going to learn not to waste your time with things that are older and um, you'll learn what to buy what not to buy um, and don't be afraid to even lose money because keep in mind you know a MacBook is like a is like an automobile you know if you were to go out and let's say you were to buy a brand new well not a brand new let's say you bought a uh, a used uh, Corvette from 2008 okay and you got an awesome deal at you know deal you paid only three thousand bucks for it right and it started up when you saw it and then bring it home and all of a sudden it doesn't start up right well you're not gonna say oh crap you know this Corvette's not worth anything. I lost three thousand dollars. Of course not. You got all those. You got all those parts: the tires, the 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 motor, the you know the body, the everything. And so, when you have that mentality that you're not, it's not an all or nothing thing. When you buy a MacBook, as opposed to even a, a PC, you're buying the sum of the parts. So don't feel like that it's an all or nothing thing, and that you're screwed if you get it home, and it's not what it's what it was when you when you thought what you thought it was um, again when you have that mentality then you're not you're not as afraid to shell out a hundred or two hundred or three hundred for a MacBook because you realize MacBook parts are worth a lot more than say a PC now you can buy PC parts or PC laptops rather you know like Dell's Toshiba's uh, Acer's to Those do have value, but I will tell you that uh, you know, with tablets coming out and the advancement with smartphones, that PCs, as opposed to MacBook, uh, has gone down a lot in value, and it's very difficult to, to resell them and to get money for the parts as you know compared to a MacBook. So that's why I would try to stick with MacBook. But again, if you get good deals on Dells and or HP, you know, don't be afraid to, to, to you know to do that and don't be afraid to maybe even get into to the iPhones or to the Samsung Galaxies and the smartphones when you get good at it you start to realize that a lot of things you can fix yourself even though you not, might not be a technician um, you'll find that you'll buy MacBooks that don't turn on you bring them home you switch out the memory and the only thing was wrong was the memory and the, and then the MacBook works perfectly and then something that you paid a hundred bucks for is now worth 350 to 400 and it happens a lot so um, you'll be able to to be able to fix stuff yourself hard drives a lot of a lot of um, MacBooks the hard drive will just go bad and it won't turn on it won't go to their operating system and then they think oh no my computer's broken well it just simply needs a new hard drive and again you can get hard drives anywhere from you know 10 to 50 bucks depending on the size reinstall its operating system it's Apple's operating system and wow you got a good computer so um, you know a lot of stuff you can fix yourself a lot of people the chargers break on them. Um, their charger will go bad and 
they don't realize that the charger's bad, and then you take it home, and then you, you plug in your charger, and then all of a sudden it's working. And you realize that the only thing that's broken is the charger. Um, if you see something and it's got corrosion on it, you can, like I said, you can get denatured alcohol, and um, you can go over where you see visible corrosion. You can go over with alcohol with a toothbrush, and there are tutorial videos about that. And then um, go over with a hair dryer, and it might turn on afterwards. And like I said, you'd have to disclose that when you resell it, but um, sometimes you can revive a, a, a logic board that has gotten water on it. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, put it in the section. Uh, thumbs up if you agree. If you don't agree, and or if you have any tips, let me know in the comment section. I'm I'm some somebody that's open to criticism, and critic with criticism you can learn, um, and you can learn new ideas and the way people do things. So please, please put your comment in the uh, comment section.